there are fresh signs that prosecutors are looking at Donald Trump himself as part of their criminal probe into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Now, among other developments, two men who served as top advisors to former President Mike Pence appearing before a federal grand jury. And also CNN's exclusive reporting that prosecutors are preparing to force close Trump aides to testify. And then there was this, the attorney general responding to critics who say the probe has been too passive. We pursue justice without fear or favor. We intend to hold everyone, anyone who is criminally responsible for the events surrounding January 6, for any attempt to interfere with the lawful transfer of power from one administration to another, accountable. Now, CNN's Caitlin Polance joins the discussion about this issue. But, Caitlin, can you just put all of these developments? There have been a lot in this past week. Put it in context, and what does this mean for this investigation? Is Trump potentially a target of this investigation? I mean, that's really possible. We are in the first quarter of a major, major criminal investigation. If we didn't understand that before, we should understand it now. So it took us a while to figure this out. There were all of these rioters on the grounds of the Capitol who have been prosecuted over the past year. And then in recent weeks, there's all these things that the Justice Department has doing that put them right in the circle of Donald Trump and looking at Donald Trump himself. This court fight that we were writing about this week that we our understanding will be happening. Um, it could be happening under seal, so we might not know exactly when it begins. That's not just about Donald Trump and people around him um, and the Justice Department. It's about the Justice Department versus Trump himself, his statements, what he was saying, and trying to get people in the investigation to share what they knew about Trump. And these other parts of the investigation, I mean, look at the list. It's subpoenas about Trump campaign officials in this elector's probe, what they were talking about. Uh, there are searches of private attorneys working for Donald Trump, people like John Eastman, people at the Justice Department, Jeffrey Clark, Ken Klukowski. There's been grand jury uh, inquiries about rally organization. And then there are people from the office of the vice president talking to the grand jury about mm -hmm. what they knew. That's where the court fight comes in. And the only thing that we understand they haven't been able to share is what they heard Trump himself saying. So it really is an investigation that is getting to Trump himself in act and his actions, it doesn't mean he's a target at this point. It just means that there's a fact-finding process going on. And at some point, um, Merrick Garland will have to make some sort of decision, if he hasn't already, about the policy of what do you do here with this? Yeah. Is there enough to bring a charge? And do they want to potentially uh, charge a former president for actions he took while in office. There's just been so much pressure on Garland about this investigation. There's a lot that has happened. There's a lot that we just don't know about where this investigation is. Listen to how some senators uh, talk, told me about what they think Garland should do. The mounting evidence indicates to me that an investigation is well warranted and there ought to be serious consideration for the prosecution. I hope in every instance uh, Judge Garland will, will just be fair and even-handed and believe in the rule of law and the equal protection law. Do you sense that Garland is feeling this pressure? Look, there's been that pressure on Merrick Garland for a while, and I think there had been this uh, growing narrative, and particularly among Democrats, uh, that the DOJ was acting too slowly, uh, perhaps that he was being too uh, deliberative. Obviously, we have a lot of Democrats who would uh, prefer that he sort of behave as this uh, hard-charging prosecutor as opposed to this deliberative yeah. uh, lawyer and legal mind. Uh, but I will say, I think everything that Caitlin just laid out uh, obviously shows that there's either growing momentum or that this has all been uh, in the works for a while now. And I think it's just a really good reminder, particularly when it comes to uh, the DOJ and how it operates. Just because we don't know at any given moment uh, all of the ins and outs of what the investigation uh, might be focusing on, uh, what might be entailed in an investigation, doesn't mean that these things aren't happening, right? Yeah. Uh, for the Democrats to be frustrated, you know, there's a political element there, but again, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they have a full picture of what exactly is going it on. It was interesting was that, you know, Garland came out publicly last week and gave an interview with NBC yeah. News. He revealed his thinking. Why do you think he decided to go public? And what are your sources telling you about his state of mind right now? Well, you know, this is something. What he's saying is basically what he's been saying since the beginning of this year, the one-year anniversary, where he's saying, we're going to follow the facts wherever they lead us. But one thing that's really interesting about this 
compared to the last time that Donald Trump was under criminal investigation, which was the Mueller investigation, is that was a spectacle where the Mueller team, the special counsel's office, really was taking the lead, and Congress kind of took a backseat to that. Garland is sort of saying things now, filling out little tiny bits about what they're looking at, saying, you know, we're following these things. But really, it's the House that's attracting all of the attention. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are doing this investigation, putting forward, getting people on the record, fighting battles, getting Pat Cipollone, the former White House counsel, in to talk to them first. And so that sort of allowed Garland to take a back seat. And we may be hearing more from him in the coming weeks, but, you know, he is a very reticent guy. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very uh, lower C conservative yeah. guy. He's a former judge. And so he's not going to ever try and get ahead of things yeah. here in the way that you might have seen maybe Bill Barr. And, you don't want to give the Trump folks any fodder at all right. to say that they're being political, they're weaponizing DOJ. And I think that he is ever conscious of the fact that Every I and T that he has to dot and cross has got to be done with utter precision. Otherwise, the, the, the Trump people are going to jump all over him for saying this is a witch hunt, you're persecuting him. And I think that is a big explanation for why he's, he's being so small so he can Right. As you said. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. And speaking of Trump, he, coming, he came back to Washington for the first time since leaving office this past week. It, this, these investigations looming over him, but clearly setting the stage to run again. Murder in our country is up 51 percent. Every day there are stabbings, rapes, murders, and violent assaults of every kind imaginable. Our country is now a cesspool of crime. Our country is going to hell, and it's going to hell very fast. It's a very unsafe place. Incredibly dark speech. I mean, is this a, what he, a platform for him to run again? I think you you can kind of take his campaign message in 2016 and kind of turbo. Yeah, that just sounded just like dark, his but convention it's in a, speech. In a basically. much darker place, and I think that's what he's hoping to seize on, among many other things. I also think he's going to run a campaign of revenge, go out and tell his voters that this campaign, or that go out and tell the lie that this election, the 2020 election, was stolen for me, and this is part of our kind of efforts to get it back. Now, I think that there are Republicans obviously who are also eyeing 2024 they want to look for a more forward they want to kind of pursue a more forward uh, looking message but I think Trump as a force is just too dominant of a Republican Party we expect him to uh, announce a bid in the coming weeks and we'll see just how kind of darker and more graphic like his campaign message yeah gets. and we know Republicans don't want him to do that Kevin McCarthy's indicated that he right. does not want him to announce before he's got these investigations looming so much happening